Hello equestrians, my name is Alyssa and I am on a quest to ride every breed. If you hadn't guessed by the koala in the tree behind me, we're in Australia and it's time to meet our first Australian breed. There are hundreds of different horse breeds and each one has their own unique story. So saddle up and join me on a ride to discover the horse. Early settlers brought horses with them to Australia. Over the years, a mix of these breeds, including the Timor, Welsh, Percheron, Clydesdale, Suffolk, Cleveland Bay, Thoroughbred, and Arabian created a type of horse that would become known as the Whaler. I'm in New South Wales, a southeastern state in Australia, and home to the iconic Sydney Opera House. Today, I'm meeting up with Teresa and her Whaler gelding, Clancy. Wow, he's so much bigger boned than yes. I imagined he would be. I have to ask, Clancy uh, is a character in the Man from Snowy River. Yes. It, did he have his name already? Does it have any connection to that? Or is he it a different had his story? Name. He had his name. Okay. Um, but I think that the station owner likes to give him kind of Australian names. Yeah. You gotta have a horse named Clancy. I mean, it's a great <laughs> name. <laughs> I was looking for another horse and um, to replace my other one because he was getting older. And I was looking for a whaler because I like to trail ride and they're courageous, intelligent, you know, curious, really sensible. And my last horse wasn't very sensible. So <laughs> I was like, this sounds like a good, good horse for me. And I found him online. And then we went up to Queensland to look at him. He was in the middle of nowhere. You take little tiny plane, right? <laughs> and landed out in the middle of nowhere and then had to drive four hours <clears throat> to see him. And I rode him and I really liked him. And he was a bit underweight then. Um, there was like, there was no, nothing out there. It was in the middle of the drought. They've been seven years drought. And the guy that was selling him because he just couldn't have as many animals. And so I decided to buy him. But unfortunately he had to stay there for another month to wait for a truck and then the guy had to drive him up four hours to meet the truck so he could um, begin his journey down wow. to New South Wales. You can take him anywhere and you get him off the float and it's like he's like at home, you know, so he doesn't really care. World War One was where the whaler really shined. It's amazing how hardy they are. Whalers were used overseas in several different wars as officers and troopers mounts and as artillery and carriage horses. They became known for their reputation as legendary cavalry horses. They were called the Whaler because they came from the area of New South Wales. a quantum short and light. So it is a like a Western saddle built on English trays. Sweet. And it's got the same, it doesn't have that forward seat. Yep. It's more straight the leg. This looks really comfy. Clancy has had some time off from riding. He had skin cancer in his nose, which required surgery and chemo. Teresa told me she had seen my Air Escape Pony episode where I rode a Greenbrook mare named Enya, and she thought I would be a good fit for Clancy's first time back in the saddle. Walk on. It looks pretty quiet. <laughs> my necessary piece of equipment here that comes with me in all of my carry-on luggage. <laughs> he looks like he's 
gonna take a nap, but that's okay. <laughs> Clancy hasn't been ridden in about a year, but he has kindly offered his services to be the representative for the whaler breed. So it's time to ride. Good man. They can range in height from 13 to 17 hands and are most commonly solid bay, chestnut, black, brown, and gray. By the 1960s, whaler horses were almost extinct in Australia. They found some horses on some, some of the stations, which is like the ranches that didn't seem to have very much outside breeds introduced and people, you know, cared about the history and they wanted to preserve the breed and so that's how the whaler horse came about. Since then, additional wild populations have also been found. There are two whaler breed organizations as well as a new breed database and stud farms have been reestablished around the country. That's one of the things that I find so interesting traveling around the world and there are so many different stories where a specific type of horse really influenced history and, and, and took people on these journeys and brought them through battles. And it's so amazing now that we still have, we still have some of these horses here. And to, to see them in person, you know, that, that living piece of history concept is, is so accurate, especially with breeds like the Whaler. Thank you all so much for watching and discovering the Whaler Horse with me. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all at the next breed. Slowly. Like I haven't had anyone jump off me for a while. And you're also the first person to ride in that saddle. Oh. <laughs> Check. <laughs> it's very nice.